One of the most amazing things about Windows is the backwards compatibility that you have. So even with Windows 11, you can kind of see that we have things like Command Prompt. We have backwards compatibility with applications all the way to MS-DOS in some extent. But on the other hand, Windows 11 also promises to be one of the most secure Windows so far. So I was wondering, what would happen if we were to run Windows XP Horror Edition on Windows 11 with all these modern security features? Let's find out. We're updating to Windows XP from Windows 11. I'm so excited. Oh shit. Setup cannot copy the file ntdll.dll. Setup will use the file 666.sys instead. <laughs> I like this concept. Never gets old, you know? Nice replacement file. They've put in a redundancy measure, guys. Don't look behind you. Still installing Windows updates, but this is uh, red Windows XP now. Special edition. That can be good. <laughs> I love what they've done with the XP sound effect. So familiar and still creepy. Oh, we do have a desktop. Recycle bin. Nothing. Uh, uh oh. Is this just a video overlay? I'm kind of curious. Do you seriously want to trash your computer forever? Oh, wait. Do you seriously want to trash your computer forever? <laughs> it's only one option. I guess, yes, we go. Oh, computer goes into the recycle bin. Oh, jump scare. This is a red screen of death. And our system's crashing. And just so you know, um, I have tried doing a control alt delete in the middle of that. Doesn't help. And now our system is nuked. And for those of you who may not understand what just happened, I believe our master boot record was deleted. So the system does not find anything to boot from. Potentially just wiped our hard disk as well. So there you have it. We just successfully upgraded our Windows 11 to Windows XP Horror Edition. And it went uh, as planned. It was all perfectly compatible. Ran with absolutely no issues. Now that we've got the fun part out of the way, I do want to talk about a few things here. One of the things that bothers me, and I'm by no means necessarily an expert when it comes to building operating systems, but why is this still possible in Windows 11? How can a single EXE wipe out your master boot record, destroy everything in a few seconds? with absolutely no mitigation. I'm struggling to think of a legitimate use case for those features. Just think about it for a second. Why would you legitimately want to disable Control-Alt-Delete? Or for that matter, why would you legitimately want to delete your MBR while you're inside of Windows? I can't think of a good reason. If you know, let me know in the comments down below. But when Windows is doing all this hard advertising about secure boot and all these advanced features to an extent where it's just an additional hassle that might force buy a new computer, which obviously puts money in the pockets of Microsoft. <laughs> Not to say that that's necessarily all of it. I'm sure there are a lot of great people working hard on making Windows more secure, but the fact that we can still do this kind of baffles me. At the same time, I guess part of me uh, is happy that we can still run our favorite Windows XP threats on Windows 11. Otherwise, how would I make videos, guys? <laughs> I would really love to hear your thoughts on this discussion in the comments below. Do you think Windows 11 is substantially more secure? And if so, why do you think it continues to allow you to run Windows XP style malware? 
And by the way, I can tell you from my testing experience that I've found a lot of EDR products, fancy business solutions, have the same Achilles heel. They just do not detect these uh, MBR modifications. There's absolutely no mitigation for a wiper like this, which is part of the whole Wobby chip family. And there are similar threats that are real cyber attacks, like, for example, the whole Petya and Satana group. Luckily, most malware these days is driven by financial financial incentive, so they want to encrypt your data, they want to transfer it to their servers, hold it, but there's nothing stopping them from also nuking your systems. Any standard ransomware could add a similar MBR destroyer component, and arguably that's a disaster waiting to happen at a large scale similar to WannaCry when it first hit. But hey, maybe I shouldn't be giving them ideas. Now if we take a look at this sample in Fars Total, it's detected by 56 out of 69 engines. Um, still surprised that people don't detect this, knowing that it's self-flagged malware essentially. You can argue that it does ask the user before it trashes your computer, so to speak. Although I don't think I had much of a choice in that pop-up, <laughs> if I recall. Now if we take a look at uh, the behavioral analysis on Fars Total, you can see that we've got um, various different components here. So it creates a scheduled task. So we've got a couple of execution components, some persistent components, and this is where we see something interesting. So it does identify it as a bootkit, writes directly to primary disk partition, modifies Windows services, registry keys, process injection, Windows services, and then it's got some defense evasion components as well, dropping files in the Windows directory deleting files inside the Windows folder, all that stuff. But most importantly, under impact, it has inhibit system recovery. And I have no idea why Windows would allow this to be done automatically by an application with no user protection whatsoever. I should add as a caveat that Windows Defender does detect this particular sample, but Windows Defender is just an antivirus, and I'm talking about how the operating system behaves fundamentally. But it definitely was a lot of fun to run a Windows XP sample on Windows 11. Very nostalgic. So please like and share the video if you enjoyed it and want to see more content like this. You can always subscribe. Also, if you're interested in comprehensive virus protection and are in the market for an antivirus solution, you'll love the sponsor segment. Avira sponsored this video to tell you about their flagship product, Avira Prime, with a host of security, privacy, and performance-related features. As you all know, Avira is a very reputable AV engine. They've had a pretty solid detection ratio for ages. Remember Luke Fallwalker, the legend? Their SDK is also used by a lot of other products. With Avira Prime, of course, you get the engine and a lot more. You've got a software updater to auto-update any software that you have. You can control the firewall. You've got various protection options, including real-time web protection and, of course, ransomware protection. Now, one of the things I like about the integration with Avira Prime is that they have everything built within the UI. So you've got your file shredder, your password manager, your VPN, all of this within this UI. So for example, if we want to use the VPN, just click on this and it's good to go. Similarly, you've got privacy settings here. You can automatically apply recommended settings or select custom ones. You can select what data to share with Microsoft, security options, including being able to disable delivery optimization, JavaScript, clean the page file, some really useful security options that you can tweak again within the main UI of the application. Now, of course, this is a TPSC video, so we are going to test with some real live malware. And as you can see right away, this page is blocked by Avira as a malware website. A live demo of their functionality. It does work. Once again, thank you to Avira for sponsoring this video. If you want to check them out, please use the link in the description. Thank you all so much for watching. This is Leo, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.